make them run to me. Don't trust nobody. Reason why I got my gun, nigga. And if you heard that, you better run, nigga. Yes, I'm back. Y'all back speaking all facts. Every time I hear y'all little songs, they be all cap. They want that old corn back. No, they can't have that. Here go that boy noggin', I'ma blast that. I, I, I remember being bad as hell up in that class. I don't do the other subjects, all I got is mad. I can't see you niggas like I got a cataract. This is me, you be riding in that Cadillac. I don't even freestyle, but I'ma do this though. Still in this damn house, don't even need a studio. He wanna rap with Quan, but he acting like a groupie though. Got a hundred scenes, hundred clips to shoot a movie though. Gotta extend the mask, bend his clock so I can shoot it. Hey, pussy boy, act like he won't war, but he won't do it. Ay. It's good, man. Yo, Quan Dog, what's good, bro? I want to uh, yeah. thank you for coming on the podcast. Yeah, so happy to be in that podcast, man. Shout out to Tom Bombcast, man. You know what I'm saying? Podcast. What's up? Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. So I discovered you uh from your song Sick of It. And then I uh, you know, I kind of went through your discography. Um so first thing I want to ask you, bro, just let everyone know where you're from and uh how it was kind of growing up in your area. Man, grew up on Southside Lansing, Michigan, you know what I'm saying, Midwest, five one seven, you know what I'm saying? Grew up on grew up in Lansing, you know what I'm saying? It's a small city, man. It's a small city, but everybody knows each other in Lansing, you know what I'm saying? Everybody doing their dang rap, playing sports and all that stuff, man. I shout out to everybody in Lansing doing their dang, man. You know what I'm saying? Grew up in there, it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy in Lansing. Yeah, no doubt. Um so while you're growing up there, right, during your childhood, uh what are you listening to music wise? Like, what are your parents playing around here? Maybe your family, or like, what are you listening to? Like, in your household growing up, man, especially my mom, man. Like, I'm gonna tell y'all this right now when I was her stomach or wherever, she used to uh, she used to uh, get out of the high school every time and she used to put the uh, the headphones, she used to have the CD with the headphones on, so the CD player and shit. So she put them bitches on her belly, and I heard boom, boom, like it's a uh my it's a Mariah Carey song with the JD beat on it. So when I heard the bass, I go doom, 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 like that's that made me who I am right now, like the beats production, and that's how it is before this rapping shit. So I've been wanting to make beats before this rapping, and uh, like while I grew up listening to, like around my mama, like. We used to listen to the old school R and B's and church music, old school rap like Tupac, Biggie, like nice music era. You know what I'm saying? And then when it comes to when it comes to when I was four or five, I get to listen to like old Lil Wayne, Fifty Cent, Ja Rules, etc. And then that's how I grew up listening to like Lil Wayne, the Carter, the first Carter, Lil Wayne. Man, I was Classic. so hungry. Yeah. Like, that made me who I am right now. And then my dad used to rap too that time. So that made me, that I'm inspired by him more than these rappers now. Because he used to rap that time when I was like, he was like a team or something like that. So, yeah. that That's dope, bro. Um. So how long ago was it when you first, uh, you know, had the idea? You're like, okay, I want to start like writing my own shit, making my own music. Man, when I first want to rap, like at age five, cause I've been know how to talk, I've been know how to cuss, I've been how to do everything. So I just been rapping from time to time, showing my family, hey guys, I can rap, I can do this, and then. When I turned to my teenage years, like at 13, 14, like I really want to do this shit. Yeah, what when was the first time you got in a studio and you were and then you started recording? Uh I had my own studio at that time. I used to have I used to rap on a phone, like on a studio app. It's, it's called uh Band Lab. Everybody uses Band Lab nowadays, and then when it turned that. I use GarageBand. You know, everybody use GarageBand on their phone, their laptop. I use GarageBand. Like, I know how to mix my stuff. I know how to do the work ethic, all that. So my first song on GarageBand I did, it's called, uh, I think it's on SoundCloud 2. It's called uh, Magic Johnson 32. Like, I made the beat first. I made the beat. It's like a Detroit-type beat. And then after that, 
I rap on the beat, and I was like, damn, I know how to mix this shit because I, I don't know how like, how I mix it and, and put it all together, like put the hooks back in, put the atlas back in, put the, another hook back in, and that's how it go. That's how it went. Yeah, and I want everyone that watches this to know you don't just, you know, you don't just hop on beats. You, you do the whole process of your music. Explain how that came to you. Like you just said, like you figured out how to mix and master it. Is that important to you or, or do you just, would you rather just rap on the beat if you had someone to produce it for you? Uh, I kind of, I kind of want both, you know what I'm saying? Like I want to, I want them to show me how they do it. So if I do, do it the same way, they're like, okay, this this might be better. I could do the, I could do the same thing as they did, so I can do it better. But me, like, I to be be patient with my shit. Like, if I wanted to mix well, I gotta redo it, remix it, redo my vocals right, redo my atlas right, the beat measure right, and all that. Yeah. So when did when did you get the confidence to start dropping your music publicly? Because there's a big difference between you know, fucking around or maybe with your family or friends. But once you put that shit out online, you know, anyone who sees it can say whatever they want about it. Man, pub, man, around, I think it's around 2018. You know what I'm saying? Like, in high school, I've been trying to put everybody on my music. Some people ain't fuck with it. Some people ain't fuck with it. Some people did fuck with it, but you gotta have some haters in your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, don't do this, don't do that, no, 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 no. But you got to stay motivated because the group, the same group in the high school is with me right now on, on this music shit. Like, like you, like, I ain't, they, one motherfucker said, damn, you better all these niggas, you do this shit by yourself. You don't need no studio time. You don't need nobody to help you do this shit. But, but publicly, like, like, ever since quarantine came around, I started doing more doing more shit. Like, I was like 19, that's 18, 19 at times. Keep pushing that shit forward, put that shit out. That's why I started putting that shit all on platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, whatever. Because I used to only put the shits on SoundCloud just to make the shit crazy, make the shit look good. Yeah, and that's what I really liked about you too when when I discovered you and then I checked out your discography. Um, So in 2022 you dropped seven different albums you already have a 19 track album out this year talk about your work ethic and how you put your music out because seven albums is a lot yeah like just just like you in the studio you you make it like like five songs a day you just put that shit like listen to that shit one time listen to that shit second time like oh this shit put that shit on the mixtape you know what i'm saying then the reason why, like, I put a lot of albums out because I want to push that shit forward. All these rappers right now, because some rappers they don't want to push that shit out forward and, and put like two, three albums a year. That's how I used to be on my high school days. Like, put like, put like fake ass twelve albums on SoundCloud. And then around 2020, 2021, 2022, I started pushing that shit. Help my man, shit. I did my man's album around that time when I started working my other albums on um, Big Bands and Tamers, and that's how shit go. I mix his shit, too. His his rap name, Kiko, so I mix I mix his shit. After that, I still mix my shit and put it all together. And, yeah. Yeah, that's dope. So what's your... um? So let's talk about the album you dropped this year, uh, Quan Print 2, 19 tracks. You know how um the music industry has been the last few years. Um, What's your view on you putting 19 tracks on an album because when you look at you know maybe like a you know like the industry normal right now is kind of you know like either an ep or maybe 12 songs at most yeah. mm -hmm. so 19 tracks i was supposed to do 20 i was supposed to no, no i was supposed to do 15 but i want to do more to make it look better as, as a mixtape because Everybody says it's an album because you look at the album cover, that looks like a Jay-Z, the Blueprint 2 album cover. But I was just paying homage to Jay-Z because I used to listen to all his albums too, like the Blueprints, the Black albums, or from Fours, and all that. That's why I'm trying to that's why I'm trying to build the confidence of this music shit because 
I want to work harder and be better at this music shit. Like at the year, at the year, at the year, I want to switch. I was going to, like every year, I want to switch the flows. I want to switch the confidence, versatilities, and all that. So the Quan Print Two is 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 a good album start. I start having more features than than all these last albums I did. I start having more features, having more beats production by me and all that. So it's crazy. It's crazy how I did that. Yeah, that's what I noticed right off the bat when um when I saw the name, first of all, I loved it because Blueprint by Jay-Z, the first one, at least one of my favorite out, I think one of the best albums ever made. And yeah. uh, and then when I, I kind of went, I was going through all your stuff and I was realizing like your shit is kind of all over the place and not in a bad way. Like you have so much versatility, which I think makes you a great artist for people to listen to. Um. I always ask everyone this, no matter how famous the artist, how underground, if you could have three dream features and the artist dead or alive, who would it be? Mm, yeah. Uh, first one's going to be Tupac. Because, man, I used to listen to Tupac around my mom. Used to play him a lot, too. The second one, Snoop Dogg. The reason, why, the reason why I got the got the Quan dog name from because my auntie because when I was like one or two years old she used to play Snoop Dogg around me and I was dance to one of his songs I think it's like what's your name or something like that she said hey go Quan dog and then that's how that shit goes on my nickname to, to my rap name everybody ain't know that so in the third one uh, this gonna be hard uh, I wanna work with uh ESTG. That's a dope pick. Yeah, I don't think anyone's ever said that yet. Yeah. ESTG, man. He 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 the hardest around this generation now because everybody don't see that. Like ESTG go hard. Like he just dropped the he just dropped El Toro too. Like it's crazy. Yeah, like last crazy. week that, that shit was fire. Yeah, even when he signed the yo Gotti back then, he he's going crazy because ain't nobody looking to these rappers like that when he used to turn to a football player to a rapper, everybody and like nah, nah. He he a great rapper. That's that at that time. Yeah, no, so. I agree with you too. Uh, I think ESCG is one of the best in the game right now. Um, where do you? What actually? What do you think you need most right now for your to career for your career to take it to the next level? And also, you're obviously fully independent right now. So would would you be open to a label, signing to a label, and what do you think you need most for your career to take it to the next level? Uh, if I want to sign to a label, uh, I've got to promote more, uh, get more fan base. You know what I'm saying? Like, like some of these labels, they like Def Jam, Warner Bros, etc. But I don't, I don't know, but uh, the I just want to sign like a distribution deal so I can still work on my work on my work and while I'm in the label, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at Empire, they they just got like Key Glock, PZ, and all of them. They still they still uh they still can do their own thing while they sign to a label like that. That's make it go hard. If I sign to Empire right now, it could be more easier just to get a distribution there than a sign of 360. Yeah, no, I agree with that too. Um, there's always something great about you know being on a label and having a machine push your shit. But I think if you if you have enough momentum, the smartest thing to do would be to sign you know to some somewhere like Empire distribution deal. You're still your own boss. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you. I think that's what I would do too if I was making music. Um, where where do you see your career say let's say one year from today? Where do you see yourself at? Mm, I'll see myself. I'll see myself like pro producing for some local rappers just to get the recognition like around across the Midwest, around across from down south and all that. I wanna see myself uh doing better than uh Doing better than everybody in my city, cause everybody in my city rap too. Lance, Lance, and uh, Lance, they get to start. Everybody want to rap in Lance now, but I'm proud. I'm proud of everybody in Lance. They just, they um, 
they'll do the same thing too. And then I just wanna uh yeah, I, I'm gonna produce for all these rappers in the industry right now. Like I can really do this for y'all so y'all can see what I'm really doing. Yeah, do you take more pride? Cause I know you talk about producing a lot. Do you take more pride in your own music or your production skills overall? Oh, both, both. Cause I like rapping on my own beats. That's that's what I like to do. Cause I don't I don't really like rapping on tight beats like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't get you don't get the recognition recognition uh to rap on some tight beats. You just gotta ask the producer to uh, buy it. You know what I'm saying? But me, I just be rapping on my own beats ever since. Like I've been doing this for like three years. Like damn, I could really rap on my own beats, even they not good, even they real good. You just you just gotta uh take some time to rap on it, and that's how I go. Look at Hit Boy, Hit Boy, you Hit Boy be rapping on his own beats too, but he oh, produce some, yeah. he would do some with, with, uh Big Sean, Nas, and, and his pops too. Like, look at that. That's what I'm trying to do. To uh. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, Hip Boy's dope, and not a lot of people are doing what he's doing right now. Yeah, for real, for real. Yeah, he's a friend of a show, and I think uh, he sets a good example for a produce because it's kind of a rare lane to have the pro- he because he started off as a producer only. You know, he was rapping obviously, but like once yeah. he brought his production to the next level, like now he can he's rapping just as much as he is producing. You know. Yeah, for real. I think that's important too for you know people that watch this uh, that are going to check you out in your own fan base. Um, for me, like I think someone who makes everything, like I grew up listening to like you know a lot of Mac Miller and he used to produce a lot of his own shit. I know yeah. Russ produces his own shit. Do you find it easier um, for you to make music while you're producing it at the same time? Do you think you have like an advantage? Oh yeah, definitely. Cause I have my, I got a friend that produced too. His name is, uh, his producer name is Solis. You know what I'm saying? He rap on his shit too, and he start be he's he start making beats at 2016 too. So I'll be making beats since 2016 on a uh, on a phone type shit. Like I could really learn how to do the shit. Like you can you could take advantage of rapping and making beats at the same time. It's like you got a multitask. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you think it helps your sound, like you, you your cadences too, like because you could you you could basically plan it out perfectly on, you know what you want your voice to wh- exactly where you want to go with the production instead of you know just walking into a studio somewhere and just like you gotta you know you know what I mean you gotta feel the beat out, like yeah. do you make your beats first and then rap over them or do you rap and then and then find a beat? Oh, I I make I make sure I listen to a beat and make beats first before I rap. Yeah, that's dope. Um, so what can your fans or people that are gonna check you out now uh expect from you uh coming up in the next few months? Like what's next for you? Man, you just gotta work harder and uh, seize your moment. Like sometimes tomorrow ain't promised, but you gotta seize your moment and, and when your time comes, your time comes. Like if your time to shine, your time to shine. Don't let nobody else's opinion get into your head and you got to stay motivated, you know what I'm saying? Stay motivated and keep going up. Yeah, so what, what's next for you? Like, what can your fans expect in the upcoming months? Like, what's coming out on your end? Uh, I'm going I'm to keep working hard and, and keep doing what I'm doing, keep making songs, keep pushing shit out, keep making mixtapes after mixtapes after mixtapes, videos after videos after videos because uh, – they they want me to make more videos than singles anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going all day. For sure. Um. Yeah. Before we wrap this thing up, do you is there anything you you want to say? The mic's yours, and also um, let everyone let everybody know where they can find you at. If you just want to spell out your name for them, uh, you could give them your Instagram and all your social medias. Yeah, y'all, y'all check my Instagram, Quan Dog Giles, Q U A N D A W G G I L E S, on my Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Y'all find some shit, and then check our YouTube channel, Big Bands Entertainment, B I G, yeah, Entertainment, yeah, Big Bands Entertainment, the channel, 
You can find my uh Facebook, Quan Jobs, you know what I'm saying? Find my show on Apple Music, Quan Dog, Spotify, Quan Dog, everything. Y'all can check this shit out. Yeah, check me out on every platform. Yeah, bro. I, I definitely want to thank you for coming on. Uh when I discovered you <clears throat> my bad, bro. When I discovered you, um, you know, just all the all the flows you have, all the cadences. You know, you're not just in one lane, which I really appreciate as a fan. And also, you know, once I got to know you a little bit and found out you were producing everything as well, I think... Um, oh, oh, yeah. My album coming too on October, Quan and Ruthless. You know what I'm saying? That's why that single's out right now. It's called uh, Missing, featuring Kiko and Monty Benz. You know what I'm saying? It just dropped last Friday, man. Y'all, If y'all ain't listen to it, man, y'all got to listen to it now. Yeah, I'm definitely going to uh, post that up for you and have everybody run it up. Um, if there's anything you want to say before we get out of here. Man, I, I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all y'all keep me motivated, man. I'm still doing my thing, still rapping, still doing everything I was supposed to be doing for the past couple of years, man. Shout, shout out to everybody. Shout out to my fans. Shout out to my family, my friends, everything. And shout out to the people who I've been making music with, especially in Lansing. You know what I'm saying? Shout, shout out to Kiko. Shout out to Mike Benz, Ladybug, everything. Everybody in the L, everybody in the Midwest, man. Y'all, y'all keep that up, man. Y'all keep doing y'all. I'll keep doing me, man. It's big bands and tanks, man.